Hello and welcome back. So in this video we will discuss a slight generalization of the control variance method we have seen so far. And well, let's jump straight in. So far we had considered a function f of x where we wanted to compute the expectation and we assumed we have a function g which is close to f where we can analytically compute expectation of g of x. Let's do away with the function f for now. Let's just call what we used to call f of x. Let's just call it x. You can build the f into the definition of x. And let's assume we have a second random variable y, which is somehow similar to x. And we assume that the correlation or covariance between x and y is non-zero. So y tells us something about x. And the second requirement is as before. Namely, we assume that the expectation of y is known. We will see exactly the same idea we had just used can be used to get a better Monte Carlo estimate for the expectation of x using the known value of y. And what we do is we do, we write x equals x minus y plus y. And for more generality, what we can do is we can even have some constant here. So we can write minus constant times y plus constant times y, where we are going to choose c later. And then what we get is the expectation of x is an expectation of x minus c y plus c times the expectation of y. And we know what to do. So expectation of y we assume is known. c we will choose later. And for every value c we will get the same answer. So that is only for efficiency. And the first term we use Monte Carlo as before. And now what we are going to do is we are going to choose c so that the mean squared error is minimized. So in this case that n i s is 1 over n sum j from 1 to n x j minus c y j, where x j and y j are ID copies of x and y with the same correlation plus c times expectation y. So just written the samples and then we know mean squared error of that estimator is 1 over n variance of x minus c y. Great. And now that variance depends on c and we just need to choose c to make that as small as we can. So let's work that out. There is the 1 over n, but we don't need to worry about that. That doesn't depend on c. So we just need to find cc, which minimizes variance of x minus cy. Minimizes variance of x minus cy. Variance of x minus cy. You hopefully remember the trick. Variance can be written as covariance of the variable with itself. So I can do covariance x minus cy, x minus cy. And I use this trick because like for the antithetic variables method before, now the terms in the variance are correlated with each other. Here x and y are correlated. And the trick to write it as a covariance works even in this case. So we can take everything apart. Should get four terms. Covariance x with itself minus c covariance x with y minus c covariance y with x plus minus c squared covariance of y with itself. And you see first minus c squared equals c squared and also the two middle terms are the same and covariance of x and x is variance of x. So we get variance of x minus 2c covariance x and y plus c squared variance of y. And now all of these variances and covariances are fixed. Variance x, variance y, and covariance x and y we can do nothing about. But the thing we can change is c. So we need to look at that as a function of c and ask where is the minimum. So let's define that to be v of c. And then we need the minimum with respect to c and we do that by taking derivatives. So what do we get? The derivative is, first term goes away. Next term minus 2c covariance x and y is minus 2 covariance xy. And c squared, the derivative is 2c variance y. And now we need to set this equal to 0 to find the minimum or maximum. 
just let's do the second derivative to verify we are actually going to get a minimum. So the second derivative is two variance of y which is bigger than zero. And assuming y is not constant, it's strictly bigger than zero. So what we will get will be a minimum, which is what we hoped for. And now to actually find the location, we need to say v prime of c is zero. And then we get zero is minus two grants x and y plus two c variance of y. And we solve this for c. So what do we get? The two's cancel. Minus covariance x and y goes to the other side. And we get c equals covariance x and y divided by variance y. And that we have just seen is the optimal choice. So let's go back. We get to choose this constant c, which is here and there. And we have just found the optimal choice of c. This argument is in a bit more detail explained in lemma 333 in the book. And you should now go and read the detailed version in this lemma. But the main idea we have done, namely the main idea was to solve this problem, which C should we choose to get the optimal reduction in variance. So that concludes our coverage of section 3.3.3. And what you should do now is you should go back to the book and carefully reread section 3.3.3. .3. But we have covered most of this section, so there will not be many surprises. And my hope is that this section of the book should now be very easy to read. Thank you all and see you in the next video.